instance, I called you a Shihan. What is a Shihan? Um, Shihan is a Japanese um, title term. It sort of regards as a teacher of teachers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, um, typical translation in, in, in Japanese, uh, when you call your teacher, you call your teacher sensei. But then people have different levels of sensei. Where did your passion for martial arts start? If I'm not mistaken, it started yeah. in Malta. Yes, it did. So, um, when I was little, um, I used to be in the Hamroon Scouts. Oh. So, the Hamroon Scouts are <laughs> one of the best in, uh, in Malta. And I started judo there with the um, Bedzina brothers. Right. Then we migrated to Australia, and obviously, I wanted to find a similar judo system. System, and uh, I, I started karate instead. So yeah, so started when I was about eight or nine years old in judo, and then continued with karate when I came to Australia. So, yeah. Now your experience in martial arts is vast. You also went to Okinawa in yeah. Japan. Tell us more about yeah. that experience and how it evolved you into yeah. what you are today. A very good question because I did karate for for a long, long time. I've been doing karate for 20, 35 years, but around about the 26, 27 year period, oh, for some reason I said I really need to go to the roots of where karate came from. Mm -hmm. So I went to Okinawa and uh, what, what happened is something phenomenal because I discovered exactly how karate should be taught. And I discovered that there was a lot of sort of missing links to some degree uh, from the karate that I learned. So I met an amazing teacher, Tara Sensei, which opened my eyes to learning more in depth about the Okinawan karate compared to the Japanese karate that I learned prior. Um, so it's really, really almost going back to university and studying uh, karate. So I've been going there every year for the last five years. Now you are one of the highest ranking individuals, and I'm going to read this, um, <laughs> under Tino Hanshi. Hanshi, yeah. Um, and the International Goju Kai system. Yes, yes, Tell yes. us more about this. So uh, Tino Hanshi is my, uh, one of my original teachers and masters. Um, Tino uh, Sobrano is um, Kate Sobrano's dad. He started karate in the 50s in Australia. Mm -hmm. He came here as a Marine, and, and ba ba basically he's renowned as the father of karate in Australia. And so uh, most of karate in Australia linked to Tino. Uh, amazing man. He only was here a, a week ago doing a seminar. We have him here once a year. He's about 75 years old. Oh. Um, so that's the karate, uh, the Japanese karate link that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've done is obviously, like I was saying before, we linked with the Okinawan karate version of the same system, which is Goju, Goju Ru or Goju Kai. Um, and um, so basically, they're the same system came from one master, um, but obviously uh, there's, there was a split in the system and different teachers. Now you have held various roles, and you still do. Yeah. Um, you were the National All Styles Victorian Champion. Yes. Um, Victorian State Director and ISKA Victorian President. Yeah, I no longer hold the ISKA one. I resigned from that. Tell us more about these roles. So these are tournament. Uh, I run tournaments in Australia, uh, in Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, so as a director, so I bring schools together um, under one banner and they compete. And we've got kids as young as five, six, seven to people who are in their forties and fifties that compete. Uh, so the ISCA um, presidency uh, I held for about five years. I ran that and I resigned. And now I'm, I'm involved with the Victorian and NAS, National All Styles, and I run that tournament. Mm -hmm. I'm the assistant national director for that. Um, so my job is to run the tournaments. We run up to four tournaments in Victoria. We hold them at Darabin at um, the uh, Sports and Community Centre. We bring up to 50 schools together, uh, and they compete on the day. They win medals. So that's sort of the sports side of, of karate that I'm involved, I'm involved with. Yeah, does that make sense? It does. Yes, yes. Now tell us more about this amazing school. When did you see and seize the opportunity to open the school? Yeah. Well, um, I think every martial art um, practitioner, at one stage or another, they come to a point where they sort of feel like, look, I should maybe teach my own school. Mm -hmm. So I started off doing uh, teaching part-time at Denong, and then my instructor, and uh, I'm always owed to him, um, he, is, uh, he said to me, hey, let's, let's open up a full-time school. And that was a big decision, because uh, everyone I spoke to back then, 25 years ago, you'll never make money out of karate. <laughs> You're giving up a good job. Uh, you've got three kids at home. You know, what do you doing, you know, how are you going to make money out of it? And it was very stressful. You know, typical Maltese people that in, we intend yeah. to make sure that we're careful before when we do anything. it's the arts and sports yes. as well, yeah? Yes. <laughs> so then my instructor and I opened up the school about 25 years ago and I gave up my job. What was it? Uh, I used to work for Camberwell City Council. Right. All right, so uh, it was a good job too. Like, um, so the decision to actually leave that and, and come and uh, start from almost nothing, uh, it was, I, I, imag I imagined it as jumping off 
a, a, a cliff. cliff and as I'm gonna fly or I'm gonna hit the bottom yeah. and but 25 and years later we're, we're here you know um, how many students yeah. do you have here so uh, about five years ago we had the the peak uh, number of students we had close to 650 wow. now we now what we've done and I think as you get a bit older I'm 53 now and uh, you start to sort of look at what's more important in life rather than push 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 yeah. so we actually shrunk the, uh, the school down we're sitting just over 300 we'd, we've got another part-time school in Templestowe it's got about 50 students and I to be honest I like it a little bit smaller mm -hmm. when it was bigger you know um, too many headaches yeah. you know uh, more one-on-one -on -one with the students more one-on-one well. on -one, more yeah. personal so and so yeah so we're just over 300 and so. how many instructors do you have um, if you count all the part-timers um, we would av average around about 12 12 mm -hmm. 13 different instructors uh, we employ a couple of part-time people here um, not including myself and some part-time my daughters, both of my daughters are yeah, both yes, They're all black yes. So, my, so you've passed yeah, on the passion. I have, definitely. <laughs> and I'd love to see them continue, obviously, um, at a school. My, my idea is that in probably the next 10 years I would love to move back to Malta. To wow. Malta to live. Oh, really? And so I'd like to see maybe my kids uh, continue the school. Then, What's uh, the best age to start martial arts? You've mentioned um, even three years old. Your kids at young age, it, it, it gives them a sense of obviously um, uh, building confidence and um, teaching them to become resilient and strong in themselves. So they'll learn to deal with, um, not it was sort of using the word failure, it's probably a bit harsh, but dealing with, uh, with things that are maybe don't go their way. And I think we live in a society that these days that uh, everyone sort of mollycoddles you know and it's like there's no such thing as losing anymore mm -hmm. you know I see that all the time because we get the kids here and then maybe a kid is not quite ready for testing or grading you know and you get the mum sometimes reacting why isn't he ready he's yeah. better than the other kid so we go into an education form and teaching them that sometimes learning to deal with failures is, is as important as even more important as winning mm -hmm. um, so kids at, at the age of five six seven or eight it's the best timing to get them in it. Um, they learn a little bit of self-defense, of course, at that age. Important to deal with bullying, you know, and how to how to how to, how to um, uh, de-escalate a, a situation by talking to the bully uh, and learn some self-defense. But more importantly, is to build self-esteem, resilience, and confidence. These are very important for kids, you know. Now, for those maybe some of our viewers who think yeah. that um, martial arts sort of um, promote violence, what would your answer be? It's interesting thing when people see martial because they only see let's say UFC or MMA on TV and they see the guy you know being punched and stuff that is very much the sport and the commercialism of of the big sport martial art but um, it's far from that you know martial art is much more of a personal development um, you know way of, of, of almost like a vehicle for personal development yes you are learning punching and kicking and I think there's something that happens in there when a person learns and be confident about themselves and know how that they can defend themselves they actually move away from violence rather than move towards violence. I think it's more the unknown uh, that pushes a person towards violence rather the, than the known. So for me, um, you know, because I know how to defend myself, I'd rather walk away from a fight yeah. and I don't have to prove anything to anyone, you know? Now there's various disciplines in martial arts. Mm. How would one know what's best for him or her? Good question again, you know. So uh, I always say that the martial art at, at that younger age uh, there's really uh, not much difference in it, good, there's a lot of good schools in, in Melbourne and I think it's finding a school with the right addicts with the right instructor um, I think get into some kind of martial art you can't say one martial art is better than the other I think all martial arts at a good school teach very good values it's really then when you start to sort of do some time into training is where you may say look you know what I'd rather do more of, a, of an Okinawan karate than let's say Taekwondo or I want to do uh, kickboxing because we do lots of punching and striking constantly for my fitness with that mm -hmm. um, you know I look at karate and, and this is my opinion Okinawan karate is like university martial art uh, meaning like it's got a lot of depth into it mm -hmm. um, so people that want to learn the more depth uh, I always recommend and again this is not saying that the others don't but I always recommend Okinawan karate you know so now as you mentioned in today's in today's society with um, violence on the increase yeah. um, especially for women and, and young children what would would you recommend as being the first rule when you don't feel secure? Um, I think uh, if you look at uh, uh, violence uh, on the street, 
you can actually eliminate a major, major component of it by being a little bit more evasive and detect danger. How quick can you detect danger before it happens? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, these days, you know, you see people jogging in the park with, with their earphones on, and they're t completely unaware of what's their surroundings. So one of the key things is to ev evade, detect and evade danger, and the qu how quick you can do that. It could be simply putting shopping in the, in the boot of the car, and you notice maybe some dude hanging there, you know, and again, being aware of that person and, and do your business quickly, you know, and get out of there. A lot of people are blasé about these things. Mm -hmm. And the second component of uh, what I always teach people is how to de-escalate a situation using, obviously, uh, your verbal skills and, uh, you know, and obviously learn how to defuse a fight. Um, these, are, these are important. And if you look at them big components, um, it only then leaves you one last component when it comes to the physical self-defense. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think detect and evade and de-escalate uh, fights, learning how to obviously talk down a fight, uh, and obviously, yeah, yeah, that sort of thing gets rid of a major, major component, uh, and you're only really looking then is a small component that could get to a physical situation. Yeah. Does that make sense? It yeah. does, it does. And myself as a woman as well, yeah. as you said, sometimes we're so blasé yeah. about it that very we don't important. realize yeah. what's going on around us. And That's it's right. very, very it's important. Just to keep a visual yeah. awareness of what's going yeah. on and you don't need to be paranoid about it. But um, and again, feel it. Yeah. Yeah, so. Let's talk about more about your migration story. First of all, you're from Malta, right? Why are you talking about Malta? It's not a good thing. 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 It's a good thing. It's a um, but uh, you provide a job, job normally, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and if Takali is okay, Nara much uh, uh, settled with what's going on, and and he can uh, he uh, he can already uh, he was already here in Australia, uh, It was it that is Yoni can very simply, and Yohana Odo Malta that is mean you provide job Australia. Oh, you know, I can let me say I'm so Jane now. I go when if I got more scholar in Malta, if I do long form one, form two, form three, I work at year nine, year nine. So you feel Kelly is the I keep not night, like you know, more single tech with Kohat Australian or English, and if I can have a Greek, Italian, or you know, con is is the you know, and it can be Australian, my Greek, my Italian, or I blend it in, you know. So if I can Australian, can you add to the you know the Greek, Italian, works? And well, you know, I escaped it for some reason. You know, I blend it in nicely. For some naturality. Naturality, yeah. Them to you feel. Oh, but uh, but it's very you know um, uh, sub sub uh, shawl different shawl here different mm -hmm. jobs. Um, in my day day um uh, that is mean even that is mean um quite not training about karate even 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 at that time yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to English, so we'll wrap up this interview. Yep. Um, uh, you are a well-respected um, uh, person in, in the martial arts Thank you. Um, industry in Australia. Your message to our viewers out there, who sometimes will feel a bit maybe lost and insecure, yourself having come from Malta, having you know been studied in Japan the martial arts, and now um, being an owner of this school, what's your message to, to our viewers out there? I think um, finding a community, people that... Um, a very positive uh, frame of mind. I think uh, if you're a bit reclusive, uh, you'll find you'll find that you'll never experience and and find out that your problems that you're facing, everyone's facing the same sort of issues and problems. So I think blending in uh, and being around positive people. I hate to say it sometimes, you know, eliminate negativity as much as you can. Don't let it get in inside your head. Goes in one, yeah, one ear. Because goes people out, yeah. immediately yeah. gravitate to being negative, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I think stay positive. Always have a positive outlook and understand that it's like winter and summer. There's uh, winter, always summer will come next. You know, so no matter what's going on in your life at the time, uh, if you're positive and hopeful and, and, and persevere, uh, the summer will come. There's always light at the end of the exactly time. Exactly that. You want slowly one, one, two, and drive it strong. Go, go, go. Whoa! Look at that! <laughs>